When you think of a bad loss in an NBA basketball game, usually you think of blowout losses, some of the largest point discrepancies where you're not even in the game from the jump, and then there are those losses that are so ugly where the competition is clearly inferior to what you have that as a fan you feel embarrassed to see your team blow an easy game. A loss so bad that you can't even remember the last time you walked away from a game in disbelief that your team lost this one. There are those games, and then you have the Chicago Bulls lost last night to the Washington Wizards that takes bad losses to the next level when you lose to a team that had won all but 13 games on the season, was without some of their best players, a team where you didn't even recognize the names of half of their lineup, and the Bulls somehow found a way to lose this game. You lost to a team filled with G League players who were playing on two-way deals and 10-day contracts at home. And it's not like this was the second night of a back-to-back. -back. It's not like this was the end of a long road trip where they've been traveling all over. They've played their last two games at home and had rest in between. And look, I get it. The Bulls are straight up gassed. All the guys you see out there are putting in heavy minutes because of all the injuries, but I'm sorry, that's still no excuse. This is the Washington Wizards we're talking about here on a night where they didn't have Kyle Kuzma, Denny Avdia, Tyus Jones, and half of their usual lineup. When Jordan Poole is the team's best player, you should not be losing said game inexcusable. And yeah, I realize I'm making this a day after the loss when I usually have my post game videos come out shortly after the game. Yeah, I was too ticked off and annoyed with this team to do a video last night. You know, a lot of people will say, well, those losses to the Pistons, those were really bad. No, those were bad losses, but at least the Pistons in those games, for the most part, were healthy. They had their best players out there. They had their young talent out there. And even in that most recent loss to the Pistons where the Bulls shot like, what, two for 27 from three, they actually played somewhat hard and with effort, the shots just weren't falling. And the three-point shooting ended up being their undoing. Last night, there was zero energy, little effort, no sense of urgency. When you start out the game down 15 to zero against the Wizards, that says all you need to know about this game and how the Bulls are. The Bulls, of course, were able to come back and make it a game, but even then, they led the game for all but, what, a minute or two when they were up two points? Their biggest lead was two points. The fourth quarter, man. The Bulls, for a period, went on a five-minute drought without a field goal, a quarter in which no one could hit a basket outside of DeMar DeRozan. Guys had looks, they had open looks, but they could not get down, and DeMar just barely kept this team within reach to where they had to shoot a buzzer beater to win the game that was a little ill-timed and taking a half-court shot when DeMar had a little bit more time, but we'll leave that aside for now. Here's the thing, and I'm usually not one to go at Billy Donovan, even though I have in the past, but I'm not an extreme Billy hater like some fans are. But this loss is largely on him. Not having Alex Caruso in the starting lineup for whatever reason, letting the Wizards jump out to that lead and set the tone early, not instilling a sense of urgency in the players to just kind of mess around and let the game come to them where they can just come back and win it. Like the Bulls don't have the luxury of taking these types of games easy and letting the game come to them and then just try to turn things on when they need to. They lost that right years ago when they thought they were better than they actually were. No, you need to come ready to play no matter who the opponent is. No more playing down to your competition. You come out with the mentality that this is going to be one of the best teams in the league and we're going to be fighting in every possession, period. And that's on coaching. Yes, it's on the players as well. They have to have that level of urgency and put forth the effort on the floor for the whole 48 minutes. But as a coach, it's your job to motivate these guys, to inspire and get the best out of them. If you see guys taking possessions off, not hustling back on defense, missed assignments on offense, you take them out of the game. Get some guys in there who are really going to bring some energy to the floor. There was no energy in last night's game. None. The other thing on Billy Donovan. How is it that Vucevic only had five shots in this game? How is it that when the Wizards are bereft of size and rim protection, your big man, your second or third scoring option on most nights, only took five shots? And Billy Donovan was asked about this in a post-game interview, and he talked about how, yeah, we have some guys, some of the younger guys that are catching the ball, trying to put the ball down and not reading the defense, and that they miss Vucevic on a lot of possessions. Like my guy, then make it a point of that early on in the game to the whole lineup. Tell the guys to find Vucevic more in the post, especially when there are mismatches. Now, Vucevic could have been better because he was getting outworked at times uh, here and there by the other Vucevic and Rashawn Holmes. And even when they did find him, he had trouble penetrating the paint and would have to kick it out to the perimeter. But there is no world in a game against a team like the Wizards where they're playing bigs who aren't NBA level players where Vucevic takes all but five shots in said game. Yes, Vuce needs to be more aggressive and demand the ball more, but you've also got to find the big fellow when he's posting up in the paint and he has his man sealed. Vucevic ended up finishing the game with 16 rebounds after a two rebound effort the other night against Boston, so that was good, but just nine points on three for five from the floor. He also had three blocks. I mean, you know, 
I was gonna go through all the players individual performances like I usually do but I just the state of this team man it's just baffling that we've gotten to this point that we're still here three years into this and we're still showing up in games like this an average basketball team that doesn't play with consistent effort and with no end in sight or direction going forward it's absolutely mind-boggling that we haven't seen any change when we all can see this team has reached a ceiling now, I like to think that the front office sees the same thing as well, like how can you not when it's staring at you right in the face, and it's very possible they're just not able to do anything about it. They can't trade Zach Levine, the assets they have available to them aren't very many, it's not like anyone is dying to trade for Vucevic. Yeah, they could have tried to pull trades for DeMar DeRozan and Alex Caruso and maybe gotten some nice pieces in return, but we also don't know what was on the table in a trade, and it's possible it simply just wasn't worth it, but regardless, this front office chose a path prematurely. They haven't done anything to fix the mess they created, and as a longtime Bulls fan, as a fan of the heart, muscle, and effort that we were used to seeing from the Bulls on a nightly basis not that long ago, I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed to be a fan of this team right now, and I'm frustrated with the organization from management on down to the players. Us fans deserve better than this. We deserve better than a piss-poor effort against a G League team. We deserve better than cheering for a team trying to strive to get back to 500. Like, there was a world where 500 was unacceptable for this franchise. Even during the Tibbs years, when Derrick Rose was injured, the Bulls still managed to finish the season with a winning record. Like, what are we even doing here trying to shoot for 500 like it's some lofty goal? Which, by the way, after last night's loss, not a chance the Bulls are reaching that, not when they're now four games below 500 and only 10 games left on the season. They're not going 7-3 to close out the year, that's for damn sure. So yeah, I just... It sucks right now. Everything sucks right now. The only thing that makes it better is you can kind of just laugh it off. You can laugh it off because it's gotten to the point where it's almost funny how we've gotten here and the state of this team. The other thing about last night's loss too is it's not like it really changes anything for the Bulls as it relates to their play and positioning. They're still going to play the Atlanta Hawks. The only downside is it's now possible they fall to 10th and have to play in Atlanta instead of at home, especially with the Hawks' epic comeback against the Celtics last night after being down 30. It was an easy night for the Bulls to take care of business against a bad Wizards team and the Hawks playing the best team in the league where they could have separated a full game between them for home court in the 9-10 matchup. But instead, now the Bulls are only one and a half games ahead of the Atlanta Hawks for home court. Not really sure it matters at this point because the Hawks are playing much better basketball. They're starting to get healthy while the Bulls are not. And I have a hard time seeing the Bulls winning that game whether they're at the UC or they're in Atlanta. But we'll see. It's painful. It's painful to be a Bulls fan right now all you can really say anyway let me know what you guys thought of the game last night apologies for getting it out a day late but uh, you get my frustration let me know in the comments as always be sure to subscribe and i'll see you in the next one